Hey everyone, uh, I'm going to cover something that I haven't actually seen covered just yet, which is essentially how to change over from NiceHash to HiveOS. So NiceHash is really good if you want to mine whatever is most profitable on your card and get paid out in BTC. However, the fees are a little bit higher than if you were to direct mine using something like HiveOS, which is free for the first uh, four rigs if you use their pool, or free for the first two rigs if you use Ethermine then their pool. So. I'm sure you're all well familiar with HiveOS at this point, but I do want to briefly cover the process on how to, uh, to change over. So I have here a screenshot from my OC tuner, which you will find down in your tray, OC tune. If you want to double check it, you can open it up. It'll open a local browser and you can pull all the info from here. So what we're going to be using essentially is the core clocks because these are absolute clocks and we will be using the memory delta as well. The one thing I have not been able to repl uh, replicate is uh, a voltage curve, but we'll at least take these settings and try our best. If you have a manual tune, you won't see this anyway, uh, but if you're using one of the canned tunes, you will see that. So step one is going to be creating a HiveOS flash drive. In order to do that, I recommend you use a Windows PC. Uh, you need an eight gigabyte or bigger flash drive. I recommend probably a 32 or a 64, just for garbage collection. And the process for actually doing that is if you go to your main hive, you click on the actual farm you want to add it to, then hit the plus up here and then add worker. You can add a rig, install new, and then you can hit this download button right here, which will create a cool installer for you which I'll open up here. It'll just download the latest version and flash it automatically to a flash drive. So I've already done that. I've installed it in the rig in question and the process is pretty simple. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shut down this Windows NiceHash QuickMiner rig and I'm gonna disconnect the SSD and plug in the thumb drive. Here we have the rig in question. I have the flash drive installed and all I'm going to do is pull the SSD. Now, since I have this board set to restart after a power outage, I might not have left it off long enough. These supernovas have gigantic capacitors in them. There we go. So now we wait, and ideally, as long as your BIOS is set relatively normally, uh, you will see this rig show up in your dashboard on Hive momentarily. Okay, so once you're all booted up, uh, your rig should show up in your list. First thing you should do is go to Settings and rename it. So it's just the uh, tab all the way on the right there. Should be the third blank down. Just rename it to something that isn't the default hash thing because it's not easy to remember. Save that out uh, using this button here. Then let's go back to the main overview. Um, I would suggest you take a screenshot right here. You can see it on the right side of my screen. I already have a screenshot of this. The main reason is to just make sure that your devices are in the same order that you're used to seeing. Uh, a lot of times they won't be, and you want to make sure you're applying the correct OC to the correct card. So once that's done, hop into overclocks, and you can see I've got all these values keyed in for the core clock, separated by a space. I've got five cards, five values. Again, just make sure you're matching the correct GPU to the correct slot. Sometimes they move around. For memory clock, pulling it over from uh, either Afterburner or QuickMiner, make sure you're entering a doubled value. So if you see 2400, you should be entering 4800. Um, that's definitely the case for QuickMiner. Sometimes Afterburner will show you the actual real clock, so use your best judgment on that. Um, if it crashes immediately, try the half value, um, which is what you would see on QuickMiner. But for the most part, it's doubled values. Then go ahead and save that out. For a flight sheet, if this is your first rig, you're going to have to go into your main management, uh, go into your, um, your second tier, and then go into flight sheets. You can't do this from flight sheets in your actual worker, but there is usually a link to it. So set up your miner, your wallet, your pool. I'm going to assume you know how to do this. It's all fairly basic stuff, but there's easy tutorials. If you have a single rig, I would recommend for Ethereum going to Ethermine and uh, watch a tutorial on that because you do have to set up your miner address and your payout threshold to not get completely eaten alive on fees. 
I usually run six or eight core AMD CPUs on my mining rig, so I like to uh, squeeze a little more money out of them with a 1.2 volt or 1.1 volt overclock, or under volt, I suppose, in that case. So I'm usually mining Monero, sometimes Raptorium, but you don't have to do this secondary mining if you don't want. If you have like a stellar on or something, it's not worth it. But this is how you uh, set up a flight sheet. Basically, name it whatever you want so you know in the future. If you've got an AMD card, make sure you're using NV Miner or T Rex. If you have an AMD card, uh, run Team Red Miner. So save that out, and then you can go into your actual worker. You can go to Flight Sheets, and you can hit the little uh, rocket ship on the right side. Once you've done that, you can go back to Overview, and in about a minute, just refresh and it should start mining. So you can see all of my five cards are working. I'm gonna monitor these for temperatures and adjust fan speeds if I need to, but uh, everything's looking good. I'm gonna keep watching for rejected shares, and if I have to dial back some overclocks, I can do it at that point. But for the most part, uh, it transposes really evenly, and you can see that my power wattage uh, consumption is actually a little bit lower, and my mega hash hash rate is a little bit higher. So this system was always a little bit on the unstable side when it came to rejected shares, and I'm thinking that was mainly due to Windows or the driver interplay. So either way, that's a basic tutorial on how to add a nice hash quick miner rig to your Hive OS farm.